In this video, I'm going to show you how we can use the Internet emulator as a shadow internet. But why do we do this? You already have an internet, why do we create a shadow? I have been teaching cybersecurity for many years. I want the student to learn and to practice. I want to design the hands-on lab for students to launch the attack and to do the defense. But there are certain kind of attack that are very, very hard to do. For example, how do you bring down the internet? Theoretically, we know how to do that and using the BGP attack. But legally, technically, it's going to be very, very hard to launch that on the real internet. That's the main purpose why we created Internet Emulator. So students can actually uh, do the activities inside the emulator. But you cannot recreate everything from the internet and duplicate them inside the emulator. There's a lot of fun things out there on the real internet. So recreating them is impossible. And that's where we have this idea to have this shadow internet. The goal is to use the emulator as a shadow internet. So the traffic, students' traffic, when they connect to the emulator, and they're going to reroute all the internet traffic directly to this emulator instead of directly going to the outside. So their traffic will be inside the emulator. And then once they are inside the emulator, now we can actually conduct the activity. We can do the attacks, do the defense, as if that is happening on the real internet. Now, if you actually uh, black hole uh, one particular uh, domain and on the real internet, if you do that inside the emulator, and then the students who are connected to the shadow internet, they're going to lose the connection to the real internet. They won't be able to reach their target website or the destination. So that is actually uh, the goal. And to really let the student experience the impact of the attack, if everything just uh, inside the emulator isolated, yes, you would see some of the impact, but it will be more fun, more engaging, more interesting to students if their experience are similar and to the real attack on the internet. So we're going to show how we can set that up and to allow the emulator to be used as the shadow internet. So in this example, I'm going just going to use uh, example A21 which is already in our GitHub repository. If you go to the examples of folder, you're going to find this A21. Uh, in this one, I have a very small internet as my base. And then I am going to actually uh, show how I can actually uh, I implement this as a shadow. Now, to implement this as a shadow involves two things. One thing is how do you get the traffic in? So the students who are connected to the emulator, how do you get the traffic inside this? And the second one, how do you get actual traffic out to the real internet? There's two parts. Now for this one, I'm going to fo first focus on how do we get the traffic into the emulator. We have a create uh, this uh, open VPN access provider, which is basically is to install the VPN server on the node that you select. So here I am create this layer, and then I select the autonomous system 162, and I am going to enable the remote access on the network inside that autonomous system. And that is going to actually create a bridge, a VPN bridge. And so the outside world can really attach themselves and to this bridge. So essentially, and they are physically connected to this network. And that is the goal. And we're using the VPN. Enable that is very simple, just a simple invocation of this API, now this network is open to the outside. Now without doing this, the network inside the emulator, they are not reachable from outside. But with this one, now they, they can be reachable. Containers inside the emulator is really directly not uh, reachable from outside. Uh, we, we do need to use the IP forwarding. So the host, the container host, which is reachable, and need to port forward to the container inside. By calling this API, port forwarding will be created. You do need to find out which port is forward to VPN. VPN use 1194. So in here, you can use uh, this command on the uh, Docker host. 
and to find out which port number is actually uh, forward to that VPN server. By default, we use uh, this number and you will see that. And then after that, you can just go to another machine. So this is, uh, has to be done from a separate machines and not from the, the same machines uh, because of uh, otherwise that can be create a routing loop. So we're going to go to another machine. It, when I do the demo, I have another VM. It's going to have to VPN into here. Now we have a create a file, a configuration file, which you can actually uh, uh, get from this folder, from the MISC and this folder, and you're going to see this OVPN uh, file. And you do need to use that because it set up the, the access, uh, the keys, the, a lot of these things. So you just use that and you can VPN into the server. So here I'm already in this folder, okay, and uh, you can see my program is here, Shadow Internet. So uh, inside this, I'm just creating this uh, uh, internet. And I'm not going to go through this because of uh, in uh, a previous video, in our previous video, we have shown you how you can create a simple internet. So this one basically just to uh, uh, do that, but actually add more autonomous systems. The actual access enabling part is here. So we're going to enable this in one of the machines. And then after that, you can just run this program that will generate the output. And that output is going, going to be just a bunch of the containers folders. And I have already started them. And this is what you see. And also on the, uh, the graphic part, and you can visualize them. And I'm just going to rearrange them, just make them look, look uh, nicely. Okay, so, and this is the, the map here. Now, if you zoom in here, and in 162 here, if you zoom into 162, and this is the bridge, okay? And you can see the one with the name BR, and this actually function as a bridge. And when we actually uh, VPN into here, we, our VPN uh, the client, the, the, the machine, remote machine, will go through this bridge and to attach to this internet. That's going to look like that you are attached to this in the network inside the emulator. So I am going to another VM. This is my uh, VM, a separate VM, and you can see there this is a separate one. And so what I do is I am going to do the here. Let me I have already started. Let me start this again. Inside this, you can hear I have already copied the file into here. Okay, I'm just going to actually do the. Uh, Open VPN. You do need to use the super user privilege to do that. And this is the VM's IP address of this machine. So this is VM's IP address. Okay. And then the port number is 65000. And once I do that, and that will uh, connect, just wait for initialization sequence complete. And then you can go here and you can check and you will see you got a tap interface. And so you actually now connect it and to the VPN server to that network and through a tap interface, and you do get IP address from inside the emulator. And so this is what we get. If you run the if config, and you're gonna see that you are connected to this one, this is gonna be a bridge. So your computer here it's going to be actually attached to this network through this bridge. And this is just a bridge, not a router. Okay, so you're going to attach to here. And now your traffic that you send to this emulator will go to this one and to this network and get picked up by the other host. But before that, we do need to do one more thing. Right now, this computer, which is outside, it does not set up the routing correctly. And if I want to visit any node inside the emulator, I do need to tell these machines in order to go there, and you're gonna have to fit your traffic into this interface, the tab zero. And that's how it can get into the emulator. So we do need to add a routing. 
Okay, so here on this one, I'm going to add route anything 10.0.0.0.8 into the emulator because that's how we actually set the IP address inside the emulator. So we can do that. Once you do this, you will see this engine is added. So I am going to do that. If I check, I don't have that one. So I, I do have this uh, script, which I already have. So I'm just going to copy from here. Now here you do need to select our routers and this is a router we're going to select okay and because on this network and this is the only router so we're going to select this one the uh, 0 0.254 okay so that's what we're going to select 162.0.254 and that's going to be the router. Okay, now, and you can see I have this engine. Now I'm attached to the emulator. I can now access anything inside the emulator as long as they are reachable from the emulator. So here I have a, a C10.161.0.71, and let's see, okay, I do have that machine. Now let's go take a look. I am going to enable the filter, ICMP, and now you can see the traffic come into here. The, my outside traffic come into here through this bridge node and go to Houston, and then from Houston and hop on this uh, transit autonomous system, and then goes all the way to this IX101. I did not name it, but it's going to be this internet change and hand it over to this router and eventually to this host. And that's just uh, how the BGP works. So you can see now I can actually access anything from inside. Now if you break that one, let's see, I'm just break this. Uh, I'm not going to be provided transit service for 162. I'm disable that and you will see that this traffic doesn't go anywhere. Now, if I go to here, and you can see I'm not reaching any the destination. And so that means your internet is done. Okay, let's break, connect this again. Okay, now everything goes back to normal. Let's just show you how you can attach to the shadow internet, how you can reach the inside. Now, we're not done yet. Right now, it's not shadow. It just show you how the user can actually use this one as the internet. We still need to go out. We did install a web service on this host. Let's try this. I haven't tried this yet. Now I'm going to go to the browser 161.0.72 and you can see I can access a web server from inside here and this is and this is actually host inside the emulator. Now, we didn't actually host anything fancy, just a static page that show you, yes, you got the page. Okay, now let's see how we can get out. Right now, we have shown how you can get in, and if we can also get out, now we got a shadow internet. So how do we get out? The idea of getting out to a real internet, to a real destination, what we need to do is basically we just have to announce those IP prefix inside the emulator. Now in this example, we're going to actually just uh, select one autonomous system, 11872, which is the autonomous system for the Syracuse University, and that's where I work. So we're going to select that, and we're going to actually uh, put a BGB router inside the emulator to announce to the entire emulator that in order to reach Syracuse University, you got to come to me. And then from there, and I will route your traffic to the real internet. When the reply comes back, I'm going to fit the response back to you. And that's how that works. Okay. So we're going to first find out the autonomous system number and for a particular IP prefix. So we know the Syracuse University's IP is 128.230 slash 16. 
you can use this command to find out the autonomous system number, which is a 11 a 72 Now, once I know that, I will just create autonomous system. You can see here, I'm creating an autonomous system, 11A72. I need to call this API, and this will tell the emulator that this one is not going to be a, a real autonomous system. This one is going to be on behalf of the outside world. Okay. When we join, and we're going to specify a particular IP address without using the, 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 the default, okay? And then after that, I have a, I need to peer this one because this is actually BGP router. We are going to peer with a transit. So here I have a transit autonomous system 4. I'm going to peer 811A72, peer with that at Internet Exchange 100. And if you see the map and you're going to see here, and that is actually now connected to the internet exchange and peer with uh, another the service provider. For, for user who construct this internet, and this is what you need to do. But behind the scene, the, our emulator is going to do a lot of things. It actually look at your autonomous system number, it's going to collect from the real world the old the network IP prefix announced by that autonomous system. Then add that route and to the BGP tables. So internally, this BGP speaker is going to announce those IP prefix to the emulator. But all of this is done automatically by our code. Now you can actually do that manually yourself, which I will show you. If you want to manually add those IP prefix, that's fine. But here, this just two lines of code, and you have uh, the BGP speaker for this real autonomous system. If you check the routing table, and once everything gets started, and you look at that uh, routing table of that BGP speaker, and you're going to find out a bunch of this. So Circus University is not just announcing one IP prefix, it announced many of them. And that's very common. And if you look at the real world, and that's what happens. So we actually collect all of them and put inside the BGP table, and then that's going to be announced to the emulator. Let's look inside. 1172, which I already created. Where's my 1172? 872 here. Now this one, if you go to the launch console, if you look at and you will see these are the routing engines, okay? Now I'm going to test this. Now first I'm going to test from inside to see whether I can actually reach the outside world from inside, and then I will use this as a shadow. But first I'm going to just pick a node. Here, uh, I'm just going to pick this node, any node, and then you do the uh, trace route, and let's see what, what this goes. And you can see here, the traffic actually goes to here, eventually goes to here, and then you will see uh, the trace route like this. So let's, let's show that. I'm picking in here 163. So here, let me just pick 163 here, okay? 153 here. I'm getting a console. Okay, I am going to MTR, which is trace route. 128.230.10.1. Dot two thirty dot ten dot one, which is one of the machine at the Syracuse University, and you can see now my traffic goes to here, and this is a trace route from here. And you can see, first one is going to be this router, so here, and then from here it hop on this uh, zero four, which is here this router, and then it's going to hop on this two fifty four here, and then eventually hand it over and to 11872. From there, it will go out, okay, and it will use a net. It was going to set up a net rule and go out, and so it's not going to use the IP address from your original source. It's going to use IP address of this machine, and it will go out when the response comes back, and it will actually uh, forward that back to you, okay? And we did set up 
the, this machine to hide the hops from outside. So it looks here, you, you see just one hop away, this machine just one hop away from the real world, that's because we hide it. Yeah, it's actually there's a multiple hop. And the reason why we hide it is just to really emulate it. This one is the real world. This one is the final destination. Once you get here, you just one hop away from the destination. You can override that, uh, the, the hiding property, and that is doable. Okay, so that's one thing, okay. Before we get to the shadow part, I want to see, I want to try a different network. This is a Syracuse University. Let's say I want to try another one, and this time I want to try the 88.8.8, .8, which is a global DNS provided by Google, and I want to be able to access that. I want to bring the DNS into my emulator. In another video, we will show you how you can create a DNS infrastructure inside the emulator yourself. But for this one, I'm not going to create a DNS infrastructure. I will use the DNS infrastructure in the real world, but I do need to have a, this local DNS server and to help me to reach the real world. And that is where the global DNS server can help you. So we're going to actually bring in the Google's global DNS server into our emulator as our local DNS server for the entire emulator. Now this way you can actually find the IP address for any host you want. So to do that, what we can do is we can just do something similar to with the way how we set up 11A72 uh, in the code, we can do that. Here I'm just going to show you a different way to do that manually. I'm going to reuse the BGP table from 11A72, we're going to just add engine and to this autonomous system. So basically, Syracuse University is going to be now on behalf of Google to announce Google's IP perfects now inside the emulator. And you just add one engine here. It's not uh, very hard. And once you add this, you just reconfigure uh, and reload your configuration file and ask the bird, which is actually the BGP daemon. You just reload that. And you do need to set up the net yourself because once the traffic reach you, you're going to actually forward them to the outside world. If you keep the original IP address, when they reply, they are not going to actually route back to you. Remember this 10 dot anything is a private, it's not going to be routable on the internet. So we're going to do the net. If you set up this is using the program, this net part is automatically done for you. But here we do everything manually. So we can just set a net. This means anything going to this destination and we're going to actually uh, set up the net and using uh, this machine, the current machines, the IP address as the source. Okay. And after that, and you can do the testing. So I'm going to do the demo to show you. So I am going to uh, get on this one. So I'm going to stop here. I'm going to stop this here. Uh, get on this, this router. Okay. I am going to go to this file. And this is the bird configuration file. So I'm going to edit this file. So here, and you can see uh, this one has a lot of engine here. Now all of these engine are added by our program and this data are collected from the real world and they add it here. If I want to manually add this one, I'm just going to add here. Going to do this one. 8.8.8.0 slash 24. I just do this one. Now I actually going to announce that I can reach. Now I'm just announcing that I'm owning this IP prefix. Okay, now everything's done. Now I can do this. And before that, I will just do a testing here. And you can see I want to pin. Now you can see that destination not reachable because nobody knows how to reach it here unless I announce them from this one. So I'm just going to announce bird C config. Okay, that will reload this configuration. Now everything is announced. So now I should be able to reach this one. 
Why? Because I have not set up the IP tables rules, the net rules. Okay, so let's set that up. Okay, so I am just going to copy and paste from here this command. Going to get here. Now I am just going to paste into here. This will now set up the net. Okay, otherwise I can get out. Now you, you don't see this, but I can get out, but I just cannot get back. Oh, okay, I made a mistake. Yes, I sh You can see why it doesn't work. Now it still doesn't work. Yes, because I made a mistake. Here, you can see I have a... Now, I, let me fix this mistake. Case. Okay, now the mistake is fixed. So now I will do the birth C. Okay, now you can see after my mistake is fixed, now I can reach it outside the world and through this. Okay, and that just show you uh, I can actually now reach. I can now use the DNS service now, but I do need to use the at because I have not set this as my local DNS server. Now I can just uh, do anything. W W uh, uh, basically. You get the IP address, I mean, you can do anything you want. That just shows you how you can actually uh, add another one and to your emulator. Okay, now the final step, we're going to use this as shadow. Okay, so we can get out from here. We can get in from here. Now we just need to uh, bring them together. So here I have a... Uh, Circus University. So let me go to here. And you can see uh, from this trace route, I'm not going through the shadow internet. I am directly go to from here, I'm directly going to this one. That's not my emulator. Okay. That's because I'm not route the traffic to my shadow internet. That's all I need to do. So I'm going to do this command. So here you can see I am. I need to add this so I can route my traffic into 110.162.0.254. I need to add this engine. So the traffic going to the circuits in the university is not going to directly go there. Yeah, right now I'm on campus, so you can see I can directly reach that. But I am not going to go there directly. I am going to route my traffic into the emulator by setting the routing. Okay, I I made a mistake, so it should have a wheel. Okay, now okay my engine is added. Okay, now I, if I do the MTR. And now you can see my traffic go to here, 10 does something, 10 does something, 10 does something, and eventually go out. Now, let's go to the emulator. If you look at the traffic here, and now you can see I am getting in from here. I'm going out from there. That just show you how you can use a shadow internet. Now I can go to here with the website here. Uh, I am going to just with the S Circus Universe News. I am going to set up the filter to listen to the TCP traffic because the web browsing is using the TCP. So I'm just going to do here. Now I will I will get the, get the let me reload this. I will get everything from here. So I am reaching the Circus University website from here. Now let's see whether that's the real case. Let me just break this. So you are here. Now you are here uh, from, from here. Let's see, I'm just going to disconnect here. Disconnect this cable. Uh, 1162. N 
Let me do this. You can see I want to be able to reach this here. Let me open a different tab. And you can see this, this one, it just keeps surging. It's not reachable. And outside, definitely I, 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 I'm able to reach. If I do it from here, a different VM, and this one, if I do this from here, this one is going to directly access. So this one doesn't have any issue, okay? Because this one directly uh, access the internet, but this one uh, eventually it's going to just give up. So if you do this, not, nothing's going to come come back. Yeah, it's still trying. Okay, let's go enable this. So, and you can see the traffic here. The just just get stuck somewhere. Let me just enable this. Okay, now let me stop, try it again. Yeah, this, this time should be okay. Yeah, you don't have any, any issue, okay? Let's just demonstrate how you can use the shadow internet and to visit the, the real internet. And I have already shown you that if I need to uh, launch the attack on the real internet, now we can actually launch that inside the emulator. I just showed you that I can just manually cut the cable. And that's actually a one attack. You cut the cable uh, to simulate the real attack. You can also launch the BGP attack. So you're not going to cut the cable. You're going to cut the uh, soft glue. And the cable is hard of a glue, and the BGP is the soft glue. If you cut one of these glue, you can break down the internet. Okay, so that's another video. But this just to demonstrate that you can, you can now do a lot of activity inside the shadow internet, and that will emulate what happens in the real one. And this is very good for the educational purpose. That's all for this video. As I said, we are going to have more videos and to show you different features of the internet emulator. Stay tuned and see you next time.